Hey guys! So you're probably wondering why I have my Halloween Horror Night t-shirt. Maybe you can see that. Well, that's because as I generally pull my pants here, we have a special guest to my channel. Crazy English Man is in the house. Come on over, dude. Sit down. Woo! Say hi. Hello. Hello, everyone. This is the Crazy English Man. He is on YouTube. His channel is phenomenal. He does a whole bunch of Hollywood Horror Nights reviews yep. for us and everything. So stay on tuned. We are going to do a Halloween Horror Nights review with a special guest, Crazy English Man. Woohoo! <laughs> it is going to be really fun. So I hope you do enjoy. Sorry, guys, for the reach up, my my battery for my remote isn't working. Okay, so apparently we're doing the upper lot first, right? Yes. And we have the knowledge of knowledges here. He's an ultimate fan of Halloween Horror Nights. Oh, been going since 2006. Oh my gosh. Totally awesome. So what is the first maze we're going to start out with? Well, the first maze on the upper lot is the Universal Monsters Remix Resurrection Maze, which it has is a returning maze from last year. Ah, uh, see, I personally love it. Just, I love the music and the techno. For me, it's not scary. Mm. That's just my aspect on it. To me, it's more like go in there and woo woo. They try to be scary, but with the dance scene, what is it called? The dance scene, Frankenstein. And yeah, the, 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 the little DJ booth. Yeah. And that. I, I mean, I, I enjoy it for what it is. Um, the music's fun. It's one of those relaxing mazes. So once you've done all the intense mazes like Insidious or Walking Dead, it's a nice relaxing maze. Mm -hmm. It's scary, but it's very like jump out meh kind of thing where it's just like, I want to be scared, but I want to be relaxed at the same time and not be frightened every two seconds. So in that case, I really do enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And I do agree, the music's kind of catchy. The music's done by DJ Figure. He's a really good musician. And, um, but I'm into a lot of the new and improved kind of mazes. I like fresh ideas that come to the thing. And it's not necessarily uh, John Merck, the creative director's um, uh, fault, because I mean, there's only so much you can really do with the House of Horrors. It's it's already a predetermined maze, so you can't really alter it too much. Yeah, so. that's the one thing that I heard a lot of people complain about is that it is, like you said, old mm. in aspect. Like for me, I personally like it. Like you said, it is a break maze. Yeah. And if you guys go to Halloween Horror Nights and it's there, it's like he said, it's not scary. Mm. It's just like blah in your face, and then you have the cool. Like what we do is we just go in there and you know fist pump it all the way bob, and you're, you end up bobbing your head more than you are <laughs> screaming. <It's laughs> it is true. The one positive thing that I loved about it this year is that it had the face off monsters, from yes. Frankenstein and the Bride, and that was the two things that I wanted to see in that maze was Frankenstein's wife yep. and Frankenstein. If you guys have seen the creations on Face Off, they had a big contest. The winner of that would have or has their um, face off creations in the maze. Sorry for that. Why is the... Sorry guys, my lovely trash man decided to <laughs> take over this interview. Oh, give me a break. One second, can you keep... Oh. Yeah, oh. so, I mean, <laughs> barring the horrifying sound of the garbage man. <laughs> I'm back! <laughs> um, it's, yeah, no, I, 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 I liked the music. And I like the characters, and I did like, because I've watched, I, I do watch Face Off with my family, and we were really excited to see um, the monsters inside the maze itself, as well as the the winner of the Universal Studios Scare Actor Contest, Make Your Own Scare Actor Contest, which ended up being the Invisible Man. And I thought that was fun. When I, I have to admit, and this is to my own fault, when I first saw the design of the Invisible Man, I was not impressed. I thought some of the other designs were more frightening than that. Yeah. But having seen it utilized as a DJ in that, it worked really well. Yeah. It wasn't really meant to scare as much as be an amusing character. Mm -hmm. So that's those are my thoughts really on that maze. Yep. The one thing that I didn't like about it, I do have to point this out. Like like you stated, I do like fresh ideas, but however the case may be the maze to me was exactly the same as the previous year. To me, I, even if they just changed the schematic, like putting one room before the other, to yeah. me that would help. Like I said, my po positive favorite is, of course, the face-off monsters. My greatest dislike is as the same, like you said. Everything. Yeah. What about yeah. you? What's your dislike? Um, well, my primary dislikes, if I had to count them, would probably be the fact that the maze is stagnant. They can't really ch do much to the interior. They can't change it up much. Um, if it was the same format in scares, 
than last year. Like, it, the scares were all in the same place mm-hmm. as last year, so I recognized everything. Um, but any positives, I would have to say, like you said, uh, the the music was a lot of fun to yeah. listen to, and uh, the last scene with the Frankenstein monsters, the Bride of Frankenstein, and the DJ, mm-hmm. those were fun characters. So they were my positives for that. All right. So there we go. The thoughts on the monster remake made. The Boogeyman! What was the maze called again? <laughs> El Kakui the Boogeyman. El Kakui the Boogeyman. What is your thoughts on that maze? Well, I have to start off with saying, first off, when I first went, which was day one, um, I didn't like it at all. And I wanted to, because I liked La Llorona the previous year, <laughs> but I didn't like this one as much. Only because when I first went, uh, there was barely any scare actors. The audio, because the maze is narrated by film actor Danny Treu, mm-hmm. um, he his voice was very hard to uh, hear over some of the sound effects. Really. So the audio pitch was a little different, <laughs> and so it was. I he's telling the story, and I'm like, Wait, what's he here? Oh God, scare actor! <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> so it was. Um, I like the set design. Mm-hmm. So the first time I went around, if I had to take any positives out of it, it would have been the set design. Second time I went, um, I really enjoyed it. They they fixed the audio problems. They increased the amount of scare actors. Mm-hmm. And the first time I went around, there's a, there's a black tunnel that went from point A to point B, yeah. and there was nothing in it. Now the second time I went in it, I'm like, oh god, it's this tunnel. And as I'm walking through, there's... Uh, And if you've ever been to Halloween Horror Nights, uh, each maze has um, some employees in a black hood that will help you go through the maze with Mm -hmm. little flashlights and stuff like that to tell you, okay, go this way. Well, there was a guy doing this. I'm like, (laughs) oh, okay, well, yeah, I know. It's a straight straight shot. I get close enough to where you you are, Amber. Yeah. And... I turn my head and he flips his flashlight to his face and it's El Kikui. I jumped so bad. <laughs> he totally oh, got you on that one. Oh, me. I wish I was there for that one. See, we went on separate days. So, oh my God, that's oh, hilarious. So that was a ton of fun. So they definitely increased the amount of scare actors. It, the scare actors, you have to give a little leeway to them yeah. the first day because it's, it's their the first, first day. day. Yeah, and exactly. even though they've had rehearsals, it's a lot different with a live crowd to mm-hmm. work with. So their groove wasn't really on. But the second and third time I went, yeah. it was oh, it was fantastic. It was fantastic. See, my thing was different when I went to the El Kakumi Maids. I didn't particularly like it because I still liked La La Rona. Yeah. Which I was like, oh my gosh. Oh, you too, Teely. That's right. <laughs> but... I love La La Rona, first of all. However, the... Bird. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I, I'm sorry. I haven't clipped his wings, so he's like... <laughs> out of nowhere. I'm very... I apologize, but that's a big distraction for me. What was I saying? Oh, yes. La La Rona. Chilling! <laughs> sorry, guys. You're going to get a lot of randomness, I bet, in this video. Um, La La Rona, I loved, and I did hold it to a high post. They had yeah. it there for two years, correct? Two, two years. years. Yes. I did love it. It was the same thing, but they got it out of there pretty quickly. That's what I did enjoy the most. They yeah. made room. So when I went into the Boogeyman, I was had it on a high respect. Yeah. However, when I went in there, um, I went, I think the third, fourth week they were doing it in October. So it wasn't, you know, the first time, but it was, they had a few weeks to practice. Yeah, for sure. The energy that I noticed from the characters, of course, I understand about acting, you get tired and everything. It just didn't flow to me correctly. They did have music pitches that were kind of awkward for me. And a lot of the scare, a lot of the scaring was like, boom. And then also too, I saw a lot, some, I was looking out for La La Rona props. Yeah. And I saw some La La Rona props all throughout. I'm like, oh. On a side note, if you do go to Horror Nights, you'll notice they do reuse a lot of props. And uh, I'll bring that up in a in another maze coming up. So. Yeah, see, you probably saw something I didn't. Mm. Because in that maze, I think there was the church scene, right? In that maze, maybe? I no, cannot they, quite they, remember. They, um, they, the way they started it out with is you're following this kid's story, and he goes to this movie theater. So mm-hmm. the first thing you see is a movie theater. You go through the movie theater, you go through the streets, and then you uh, reach his house where his whole family's been butchered, and it's his birthday party. And then you Happy go. Birthday. I know, right? That's a great way to come to a birthday. And then he go. And then 
according to the story, he gets kidnapped, and you go up to El Kikui's mountain lair, and that's where the maze uh, is the fi finale of it. So. Yeah. I, I don't know. For me, when we went, the audio, see, where you said it started out with his story. Was yeah. there recording something like that? Yeah, they, they recorded they recorded Danny Trejo doing voiceovers during s different segments of the maze to mm -hmm. explain the story. Um, like I said, the first time I went through it, it was very hard to understand because the sound effects, uh, music, and uh, effect, well, the sounds were too high pitch to really hear what Danny Trejo was saying. However, the second time I went, they actually fixed that, so it was a very even See, level. with me... We didn't get the, the, the story or the sound effects. We only mm. got, like, the scary music. So that's probably what I was missing, because it's like, yeah. oh, look this, oh, look this, what? <laughs> then also, too, I was looking out for some of the Lala Rona props, and I did see, like, different chairs and, like, yeah. different backdrops that look so similar to her. I'm like, oh, come on, if you're doing a new maze, please at least gut them and make them something different. That well, I was... think to their credit, though, um, they, there, there was a few props reused. However... Uh, the, the maze itself was very brand new, um, like the movie theater set was fantastic in the mm -hmm. way it felt like a movie theater set. Um, I didn't notice as much as in other mazes, however, I, I see what you mean. You do kind of get distracted by like, oh, that was from another <laughs> maze previous year. Yep, and I, sorry guys, it's leaving. And now I'm making a prediction, They, I'm predicting they might have it next year. What do you think? Because La okay, was for this is too. I that I've talked to other fans and I do agree they may do something brand new because I don't really see them doing too much with the that mm -hmm. story. However, because it's a story, I mean, it, it comes down to uh, that um, depending on budget reasons for horror nights, they they only have. Um, it's not like Orlando, which can go blow out. Uh, one they uh, with brand new mazes, you yeah. know. So they may bring it back um, and use it to save on their budget for other mazes. Mm -hmm. Other than that, the, as for the story, it's very difficult to uh, to see ahead to see if they'll do it. Um, uh, I think they'll bring it back though, only because one budget. Yeah. Two, it's a story about like the boogeyman. So really, you can do anything you want with it yeah. like La Llorona there was different variations of La Llorona yeah. whereas El Kikui is a very stagnant character he doesn't change with he has like almost one incarnation of mm -hmm. him he kidnaps children however the the design itself is brand new so it's very difficult to say you know yeah for me I'd give the maze like a three out of five because it's right in between for me but there was definitely something's wrong with it what about you I would probably give it uh a 7 out of 10. I I say that because it does have some failings to it. Mm -hmm. um, but in the end, uh, it did redeem itself a little bit. So it did bring itself. Because when I first reviewed it, I gave it a 5 out of 10. And then that was the first day I went. Yeah. And then I decided to give it another chance. And I went and I think I gave it a 7 out of 10. So I would still keep that score. Okay. So you heard it from Crazy Englishman and me, myself. What is it called? El Kukui. El, El Kukui. That's our thoughts on, sorry guys, thoughts on our process about that.